it's a little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This a little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This a little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Out of all of the hats that I wear, radio talk show host, television entertainment reporter, grad student, these all enrich my life. They're good ideas. Oh, but they, they're my talents on display. You see, singing, it moves me. It transforms me. It's the God idea in my life. It's my gift. Now, I'm fortunate to know that. My parents knew it, and they made sure that I knew it. <laughs> But not everyone comes into their gifts so easily. A great way to begin is by understanding the difference between a talent and a gift. Steve Harvey, author, radio and television uh, host, as well as comedian, he said it where I could understand it. He said, your talent will allow you a wonderful career. A career is what you are paid for but your calling is what you are made for. A calling ties directly into your gift. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> now, for those of you who know this, honey, you are lucky. Run, run and use your gift. Use it until you are used up, dead, gone, kaput. But for those of you who don't know, I have to ask, do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is showing you? Where are you going to? Do you know? Well, tonight, I hope to help you begin to answer the question, why was I born? For in that, that answer, that's where you will find your gift. Okay. So what is it that you would do if you never were paid for it? Anything? <laughs> Seriously, that's what you need to think about. Go back to your childhood and, and wonder, did I dance all the time? Did I talk all the time like me? Did you build all the time? Go back to that time and reconnect with what you did, that one thing that you couldn't stop doing. That's where your pearls of your gift are. Search and search and search until you find them. And don't be surprised if it's not what you expected. Sometimes we receive gifts that don't look like us. Now, Beyonce, she's a beautiful woman. I knew when I saw her, that girl can sing. And by the way, I will have that body when I get to heaven. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I knew she could sing. I just believed it. She was so beautiful, so poised, and dedicated. But every now and then, a gift will show up that mm, is not delivered by the obvious, a person who looks like they should have that particular gift. For example, you remember in 2009 with Britain's Got Talent? Remember a woman walked out on stage, frumpy, unassuming, quiet in nature? When Simon Cowell started interviewing her, people in the audience started laughing. And then she opened her mouth and sang. And she blew the world away. Susan Boyle blew the world away, and we never cared what she wore again. Think about that. I met a gift like this once. <laughs> I'm from Gary, Indiana, and all I did was go to church. <laughs> We went to church Tuesday through Sunday. Monday was my Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> On 
on Sundays, church was long but fruitful. Of course, you would receive a song that uplifted you and a, a word in the sermon that even challenged you. But every now and then, a surprise would show up. A woman was sitting way in the back of the church. Oh, I remember her because she was bejeweled in all of her sequin dress and her, her crown or hat, as you may call it, filled with rhinestones and peacock feathers. No wonder she was sitting in the back. Nobody could have seen around all of that. <laughs> and just when there was a pregnant pause in the service, he gave her a rise, and she began walking down the aisle, touching to the left and touching to the right, singing Amazing Grace, all four verses. <laughs> and she could not sing. No, I am telling you, she could not <laughs> sing. It was awful. However, around the second refrain or so, something happened. All of a sudden, the spirit in her voice lifted us outside of our circumstance, took us away from that horrible week that we had just had or the one we thought we were about to enter on Monday. A gift can do that sometimes. Now, once you have the gift, you have to nurture it, protect it, and care for it. That means everything you do, you should start to breathe it into your gift. Everything you watch, everything you listen to, everything you read affects, positively inspires your gift and yourself, or it can infect, taint, destroy it. Affect, infect, affect, infect. I have taught at many high schools my workshop. The music department sponsored me, and I would arrive and ask the students, okay, so tell me what you go to bed listening to, what you wake up in the morning listening to, what you study and listen to. Oh, they would holler out all the usual suspects, right? Some I understood, some I knew, but when they got to Motown, I would say, hey, that's my music. That's <laughs> my music. But every now and then, you would hear students that would holler out, hmm, death metal, gangster rap. That's what they would rise and fall asleep to. Now, I don't know about you, but as a mother of two, I would never want my children to see the world through that particular lens. Affect, infect, affect, infect. Protect it, nurture it, care for it. Now, there will be times well, you don't quite understand why the gift is holding on to you when you get it. It will show itself at unexpected times. I remember being at a church, no, in fact, it was a women's group, I'm sorry. Being at a women's group, and they had met with me and said, we want you to sing one song, Gerald, and only one song. And I was like, I can do that, I can do that. This is about 30 years ago. We had come up with a song. I can't remember what it was right now, but it was something like, we are family. Y'all know that song? Come on. I got all my... Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, for whatever reason, I don't quite know why, but the night before, I was just stirring with another song, just stirring, going, man, I can't get this song out of my brain, out of my heart, out of my spirit. But that's all right, that's what I'm getting paid for, sing the song. We are family. So I stand in front of the microphone, I'm ready, right? And all of a sudden, I sing. For all we know, we may never meet again before you go. This moment sweet again. We won't say goodbye until the last minute. I'll hold out my hand and my heart will be in it. Afterwards, a member came to me and she said, you know, we lost a friend, a dear friend, tragically. And as a group, we've been grieving collectively. 
that song that you sang was just what we needed to hear. Just what we needed to hear. Just what we needed to hear. They never hired me again. <laughs> nope. Cash that check one time. But just know when you're nurturing and caring and protecting that gift, these are the things you have to consider. If the gift is going to work, you gotta know. You gotta know what's in it. You gotta be able to trust it. And I trusted it that day. Another way that you can nurture it is by coming up with your own personal value statement. Your constitution. Mine started back in Gary, Indiana. Yes, it did. We had a group called the Puritans. If you were a teenager between the ages of 12 and 17, you were a Puritan. Do I look like a Puritan? <laughs> we met every Tuesday, right? That's where we learned about the books of the Bible. We had to memorize scripture. And of course, we had to learn the Ten Commandments that they created for us because the original just wasn't enough. <laughs> Let's see if I can remember them, um, a few of them anyway. Um, stop and think before you drink. <laughs> Don't let your parents down. They brought you up. <laughs> be humble enough to obey. You'll be giving orders yourself someday. <laughs> At the first moment, turn away from all unclean thinking. Well, I didn't do so well with that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Choose your friends carefully. You are what they are. Now this constitution, really, these are the pillars of my gift. They padded, secured, incubated. You know, I clearly have parameters drawn, but sometimes, sometimes you get distracted. Sometimes your gift takes a different direction that you didn't see coming. I was in the studio with my family once, singing with one of the nation's biggest stars, and he brought in another guest, and I call him the Funkmeister. <laughs> Yeah. And he had us singing on this project for about two weeks. We were back and forth to the studio, and all of a sudden, he introduced the song and said, hey, I want you guys to sing this, and I'm reading through going, okay, I know where my parameters are. I, I, no, if my children can't listen to it, I'm not singing it. Well, they wore me down. They seduced me. They kept talking, kept begging, kept talking, and I chose, I chose, I decided to sing the song. I read citing the international anthem to booty off. <laughs> I am aligned with booty, patriotically pledging allegiance to the booty. <laughs> I am so blushing, you can't tell, but I am. <laughs> So now I have to go home and tell my children and my husband what I had just done. <laughs> now my children were too young, so I delayed it about five years. <laughs> but when they became teenagers, I thought I better tell them. And I will never forget, my daughter was like, oh, mom, such a drama queen, oh, mom. <laughs> Brilliant young lady, I absolutely adore her. Mom. My son? He looked at me and said, that's okay, Mom. It was just the detour. It's not the death of your gift. Those were the words that carried me right back onto the road. And know that those words mean something. Now, I hit the family lottery. My parents told me every day that I was beautiful, every day. What if they had told me I was ugly, fat, and stupid? Would I have been silenced, broken? have used my gift for something else in a different way? No, they said, Geraldine, you are beautiful. Let me tell you something, little girl. I was born a size six with bad skin, <laughs> okay? But every day, you are beautiful, you are beautiful. And I bought into it. I believed it. I believed it. I still believe it today. I am Janet Jackson in a bigger box. <laughs> Affect, infect, affect, infect, affect, infect. I cannot tell you how important those words are. 
but the words can support your gift. Come up with a mantra. That's what I do. When I'm not quite sure which way to go, I have a mantra that I repeat daily. Now, there was a time I decided to do the one that said, um, make more, work less. I mean, come on, if it works, it works, right? Well, it worked. I am telling you, my finances were so increased that year, I haven't made that much money since. It was an incredible year for me. But the consequences of words travel deep. All of a sudden, my marriage was ending in divorce, my children were miserable, and my cherished relationships were challenged. People I've known for Decade after decade. Be careful what you say. What words you choose to build you up, to support you, to, to help you in giving out your gift. Now it's time to decide. You've got the gift. You know how to nurture it and care for it. You've got to share it. You have to choose how to share it. It will absolutely be up to you. And it's never too late. Some people come early into their gifts. Some people come late into their gifts. You still have to decide how to share it. Will you be generous with it? Will you do good with it? Be good with it. That's the question. Choose wisely. Because every time you deliver that package, and it is a package to be delivered, every time you deliver it, it has to come from the right place. And when it doesn't, it disturbs you. It disturbs your inner core. Now, there will be times when you will be exhausted. You won't even know how to keep pouring out the next time you need to give your gift. We pour it and pour it and pour it. You've seen nurses and doctors like that, right? You've seen teachers principals, and even students do that. They pour and pour and pour themselves out. Where do they go to fill up? We all need a filling station for our gift. Find one. For me, it is steeped in those five large gatherings that my family and I have. First of all, they keep me humble. You know, they'll come right up to you and say, what is that wig you are wearing? <laughs> and what are those Betty Boop shoes? My, today, my mother looked at my shoes and said, really? <laughs> Don't say nothing, I like my shoes. First of all, they keep you real. They really keep you real. And when I leave those family gatherings, I am completely satiated, mentally, spiritually, and yes, unfortunately, physically. <laughs> but I am filled, ready to pour out again and again and again. So, what have we learned here today? We learned that you have a gift that it absolutely matters. You belong to it and it belongs to you. You belong to it, it belongs to you. Go out, nurture, protect it, care for it. Figure out how you're gonna share it. Be careful, be careful. When you're not quite sure which way to go, give yourself a mantra to help build it up. Come up with a personal statement, a constitution. But above all, Choose whether you are going to affect or infect. Affect or infect. It truly is your choice. Now you can never say you didn't know. Thank you. <laughs>